Welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 11th of June. Now, the mRNA vaccines are expanding around the world. There's multiple plants that have been built to produce them. So let's have a look at where we are at globally. All of the issues that have been raised, the concerns, the adverse reactions, um, don't really seem to have been taken into full cognizance. And... Um, that they're ploughing ahead. Let me give some examples here. Let's start off with this one. This is from uh, Moderna itself. Now, this is the website it's from. I've put the references in, of course, as always, uh, from Moderna. Moderna receives US FDA approval for RSV vaccine. Now, what this vaccine is, is it's, uh, well, it's 31st of May 2024. Moderna today announced that the US Food and Drug Administration, FDA, has approved it. So it's uh, it's called, that. that's the name of the vaccine they're using there, or the, ge the genetic, uh, genetic sequence that they're giving. And as we see, it's an mRNA vaccine, messenger ribonucleic acid vaccine, now, uh, now approved as a, as a second vaccine. Now, when you give an intramuscular injection into the deltoid, the very small lipid nanoparticles, some of them are going to stay there, but others are going to go back into the systemic circulation. They'll drain in the veins, eventually draining into the vena cava, which will go back into the right side of the heart. That will pump the blood to the lungs. The, lungs will, the blood will come back from the lungs in the pulmonary veins to the left side of the heart in the aorta. The left ventricle will pump the blood into the aorta and the aorta will take it everywhere apart from the, the, the lung tissue. So it'll take it to your ears. It'll take it to your nose. It'll take the blood to your toes. It'll take it to your myocardium. It'll take it to your brain. It'll take it to your testes or ovaries. This is the concern, the systemic distribution. But it's now been approved by the uh, FDA for respiratory syncytial virus, common virus. To protect adults aged 60 years and older from lower respiratory tract disease caused by respiratory syncytial virus infection. Um, some people might think that the risk of the vaccine is greater than that caused by RSV in older people. This is what the uh, press release says. The approval was granted under a, a breakthrough therapy designation. So a, a breakthrough therapy designation and marks the second approved mRNA product for Moderna, of course, after the, um, the uh, COVID vaccines. Chief Executive of Moderna, the FDA approval of our second product builds on the strength and versatility of our mRNA platform. And this is indeed true. The mRNA platform is remarkably versatile. You can string together any sequence you want to make pretty well anything you want and inject it into the human body. But another main concern I have is, as well as the systemic distribution, is this is going to go to all of the cells potentially in the body. So let, let, let's imagine that this, for example, is a cell lining the vascular endothelium of the uh, myocardium, the blood that's going through the myocardium, these squamous cells. And then along comes the uh, lipid nanoparticle. Here, that sends in the RNA into the cell. The cell's genetic apparatus will then produce the antigen. Now, when you give a mRNA vaccine, you could produce a little bit of antigen or you could produce one heck of a lot of antigen. Um, as far as I know, the dose of RNA that you give is not that closely well, it doesn't determine the, the amount of uh, antigen you produce. So you could produce a little bit or you could produce a lot. And to me, this goes against one of the completely fundamental axioms of giving drugs. You give the right dose of the right drug to the right patient at the right time via the right route. How do you know the dose? Because you don't know how much antigen the body is going to produce. Anyway, going back to the diagram, the, the uh, cells here will then produce the antigen, whatever it is. Now, if that's in your arm and you get some white blood cells coming along, say some 
cytotoxic T cells coming along. And these cytotoxic, cytotoxic T cells, if they, they will recognize this antigen as foreign and they'll start beating it up and probably could eventually kill the whole cell, actually. Um, now, if that's in your arm, you get a sore arm. If it's in your um, myocardium, you'll get inflammation in your myocardium. So the spike protein was particularly uh, pathogenic. Very strange that the spike protein was, was, was chosen. Very, very strange in my view. Um, but any antigen that goes onto the surface of the cells will be recognised by the immune system. The inflammatory reaction will be there. The immune system will attack these cells, thinking that these cells are virally infected and kill these cells. And this concern, as far as I know, hasn't been addressed, and yet the programme um, ploughs on um, a pace. So that is, uh, that's my concern there, the systemic distribution and um, the production of unknown amounts or indeterminate amounts of um, antigen and the reaction of the immune cell to the antigen expressed by the body cells. Of course, this might not be a cell. These cells might not be in the myocardium. Um, they might be in the testes or the ovaries. You see why I'm concerned. Anyway, let's uh, go on. That was that announcement. Uh, a little bit more on that. Um, Moderna expects to have this uh, RSV vaccine available for eligible populations in the United States by 2024-2025 respiratory virus season, which of course is next winter. Moderna has filed mRNA approval with regulatory in regulators in multiple markets around the world. So I don't know, but I mean, we can assume that this includes the United Kingdom, I think. I think we can assume it includes Australia, Canada, New Zealand. In fact, I assume it includes anyone who can pay. Um, I will not be getting one. Let's move on to another uh, area here. Uh, this is from uh, Clinical Trials Arena. Now, here's the, uh, here's the announcement on this one. Check it out. This is not me making it up. All the uh, information is there for your uh, perusal. Now, Moderna races ahead in flu and COVID-19 combo vaccine. Race with uh, phase three win. Um, win okay they've called it a win uh, now this is called Moderna injection mRNA again messenger ribonucleic acid so as well as the RSV we're now getting this influenza one changing to uh, mRNA now of course we do have existing influenza vaccines but they want to replace it with these new genetic sequence vaccines this seems to be the way uh, progress is being um, facilitated. Now, this MR, mRNA uh, 1083 uh, comprises a seasonal influenza vaccine. So it contains an influenza vaccine. And this is the, the, the mRNA uh, 1010 is the influenza mRNA vaccine. So again, the RNA will code for a sequence and the body's own cells will produce it, expressing it on their surfaces. And of course, another concern is, um, and we haven't heard this fully addressed, is uh, normally, MR, uh, normally it's RNA, uh, sorry, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, makes RNA, makes uh, protein. That's called the central dogma. And uh, DNA converted into uh, RNA, that will be called uh, transcription. And this RNA into protein will be called translation. If RNA takes the information back into DNA, that would be called reverse transcription. 
and we know that there are enzymes in the body called reverse transcriptase. Let's hope that doesn't happen. And the next, so so it contains this is this is the influenza vaccine here, and this is the new uh, what are they calling it? Next generation COVID nineteen vaccine prospect, and that's the new uh, COVID vaccine. So it's a combo of the influenza RNA and the uh, COVID RNA. So this would be giving two RNA vaccines to the same person in the syringe, same syringe in the same injection site. Now, this is not me making this up, honestly. Look, look on these references I've given you and check it out for uh, yourself. Um, it is all there. I know you might be struggling with credulity and belief, but I'm just reporting what is on these references that I'm giving you. Moderna announces positive data from a phase three trial from its uh, mRNA vaccine candidate. Uh, so now in phase three trials, so th these phase three trials, that's the trial there. It does seem to be ongoing. Moderna says statistically significant higher immune response compared to existing vaccines on the market. The trial met its preliminary endpoints as released on the 10th of June press release. Immune response was seen across three influenza strains, so it looks like this is coding for three influenza strains, H1N1, H3N2. These are different influenza strains in B. Victoria. So three different types of influenza, sort of trivalent thing. So presumably, it contains three types of RNA. I don't know. Presumably it does. And... COVID spike protein, assuming they're still using the spike protein RNA, all in one injection. Although Moderna has not published the full data from the phase three trials yet, it plans to present the results in a more, more detail at an upcoming medical conference. Okay, upcoming medical conference. In addition to submission for publication. The company said it will engage with regulators on the next step. So, looks like it's uh, coming to a regulator near you. Right, now, it's not just this. There's other RNA vaccines in the pipeline. Let me just give you, this is on this, this is from this um, information here. Moderna advances multiple vaccine programmes in late stage clinical trials from the press release of the 27th of March, 2024. So cytomegalovirus uh, is in a pivotal phase three trial evaluating. This is the mRNA cytomegalovirus. So again, presumably this codes for the cytomegalovirus, uh, some of the cytomegalovirus antigens, epitopes. Um, cytomegalovirus, very common, doesn't cause a problem most of the time, but can, to be fair, cause problems to children if they get it from their mother. Epstein-Barr virus, um, now this is the virus that causes uh, infective uh, uh, mononucleosis, the um, um, glandular fever, which can be a very nasty uh, infection in adults, but of course virtually everyone's been exposed to it. Probably 95% of the population have got antibodies to it already. Um, the randomised observer-blind placebo-controlled study is fully enrolled. So it looks like this uh, EBV, Epstein-Barr virus trial, is ready to rock and roll. Herpes simplex, another mRNA vaccine. Phase 1-2 trials at the moment. Varicella zoster. This would be for shingles primarily, I guess. Um, mRNA one four six eight as initial data available from a phase one two trial. Norovirus. I've had that. You get watery diarrhea for a few days. 
another mRNA uh, vaccine uh, being uh, actively uh, developed. So, as far as I know, British government's got a deal with Moderna. Last time I checked, just for a billion pounds, I think. I think we've agreed to buy these vaccines over the next 10 years. Same in Australia, huge new mRNA plants being built. Same in Canada. Um, mRNA looks like the future, doesn't it? Needless to say, I will not be enrolling for any of these trials. I will not be accepting any of these vaccines. But that's what's happening. They are being developed on a totally huge scale. And uh, FDA has already approved one extra one. Regulators around the world are being approached. It's, it's quite unbelievable, but it's going ahead. Just think of all the people that we've interviewed just on this channel with, with vaccine injuries. And yet this is all going ahead, in my view, without adequately addressing safety concerns. Quite incredible. But the regulators are there to protect us. Hopefully they'll do that. I mean, they are largely funded by the pharmaceutical industry, but I'm sure that won't influence their decision-making at all. I have nothing else to say, really. I mean, that, 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 I'm just giving you this information. Um, yeah. That's it. Interesting future ahead. Thank you for watching.